So I know this is definitely not the most traditional or quintessential barn looking structure that most of you are used to seeing. But for me here in the Arizona desert, doing things the way I like to do them, using scrap materials and various other things that I'm trying to repurpose, this is about as barn as it's gonna get. And now thanks to the new barn door that I just got done hanging, it is now a fully functional barn that will hopefully keep the hay and other things that I have stored in there reasonably weather tight so in today's video i'm actually just going to focus mostly on the barn door hardware that i made out of uh, some old uh, motor pulleys and some scrap material that i had on hand and hopefully it will be inspiring to you if you have a similar type of project and then at the end i'll talk to you about the lock that i put on there um, i added a little uh, pulley mechanism and then a little diy guide on the inside of it to keep the door from swaying in and out and that's pretty much it. Uh, before I get started, I wanna say thank you to the Home Depot Perspective and Ryobi Power Tools. As you know, they sponsor some of these videos and I'm grateful for that. So without further ado, let's get started. So here's what I'm working with to make this DIY barn door hardware. I've got two old motor pulleys that I got years ago on clearance. I think I paid 50 cents a piece for these. And at the time I didn't know what I was gonna use them for, but obviously now I'm using them for this barn door. And then I just found some bolts that fit exactly in there, which will be the axles. And then for the outer portion of the barn door hardware that's gonna hold the pulley, I have this old piece of two inch by six inch by quarter inch thick steel tubing. And I'm gonna cut uh, two of these off in about an inch and a half wide strip. And basically this roller will be mounted in there and then it'll get bolted to the top of the door down here and it'll make a lot more sense once you see this uh, start taking shape. So the last clip you probably saw was me installing the roller hardware onto the barn door and you can see it is installed now but you may be wondering about the track that it is hanging off of. Well that is a piece of scrap aluminum angle that I had on hand. It is 3 16 inch thick by 2 inches tall by an inch and a half wide 
and I have it spaced out from the barn by about two and a quarter inches to allow the roller hardware to pass by the corrugations of this sheet metal roofing that I'm using as the siding. And the lock hardware that I have used is just standard gate hardware. I used a little scrap piece of aluminum as a spacer to bring the locking portion or the little bar out to where it meets up with the edge of the door. And then I added a lug nut right here as a spacer to give a little weight to this because on the other side of the door, I have a golf ball threaded in here so I can operate it from inside. And you can see I already have some hay stored in here. I've got it blocked up off the ground so none of the hay is actually touching the ground and eventually it will probably extend in this direction. On the other side, I have two galvanized trash cans full of beets and calf manna uh, as our supplemental nutrition for the goats in addition to the hay. And the last little thing I'll show you is my little DIY barn door track hardware. I put a piece of aluminum channel right here. And if you look back there, I'll show you some clips. I used one of my old uh, circular cutouts from my Ron Polk workbench build with a bolt and some nuts to make a trimmable door guide. That way I can move this in or out to make sure the door is exactly parallel with the structure of the barn. Well, I almost forgot to touch on one thing that some of you may be wondering about, and that is why the aluminum angle that I am using as the barn door track extends so far past the structure. Well, the answer to that is pretty simple. It's just a small barn. I have a six foot wide doorway, and the space on either side is about three foot. So for this six and a half foot barn door to open fully enough to where that doorway is all the way open, it simply has to come out past the structure. So that is why it extends so far. You can see I've added a diagonal brace on it to keep it from twisting. As I mentioned before, it is a bit undersized, but being that it was something I had on hand, you can see it's got scrap material paint on it. Um, the price was right, so I'm just gonna roll with it. If it ever ends up being a problem, I can always replace it in the future with a beefier piece of steel or something like that. Well, I think that's going to do it for this barn door project. As always, I hope you guys found it interesting and perhaps it inspires you a little bit uh, to take a second look at all that junk you might have laying around that you can uh, tackle some projects by making do with things that you have as you saw me do with those little motor pulleys and uh, the scrap piece of steel tubing. There's just a lot of things that we can fabricate with things we have lying around. Obviously some things are easier to just purchase brand new, but uh, in this case, I think it turned out pretty well. The barn door rolls nice and smooth. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you've watched my channel for any time, you know I like tinkering and making little uh, things like the little golf ball holder to open the door from the inside. And then the, uh, the little uh, uh, barn door guide on the inside. That's just stuff uh, I think it kind of uh, exercises your mind and uh, helps keep your mind uh, nice and fit and healthy. So anyway, as always, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this. Uh, hit the subscribe button for uh, more similar future random projects and the things that I do. Uh, remember, you can see my videos on Rumble and Odyssey. And uh, I'm going to have to wrap it up right now because it is about milking time. And if I don't, you're going to hear Bell. Uh, screaming in the background because she always lets us know if we are not perfectly on the, I don't know, 630 timeline that she likes to be milked at. So I guess I'll see ya. Even the chickens know it's milking time. They like to come here and wait when we fill up the treats for the goats just in case we drop anything and they clean it up. And for those of you who might be interested in a little update of the rainwater harvesting system that I installed a couple of videos ago, 
This has been full for close to a week and a half now. We received between an inch and a half and two inches of rain. And uh, being that everything is so new still, everything operated flawlessly as expected. Uh, but I did want to address one question that I got from a lot of you, uh, people saying that I should cover this or paint this. Um, I mentioned it in the description and I've uh, mentioned it in uh, quite a few of my videos that I always try to cover that because I am very aware what light does to water sitting in a semi-clear tank. Um, yes, I will cover it, but I wanted to get that whole system in place before we got those rains that we were expecting.